Especially no, no, no. I, I mean, I feel your frustration. I mean, I, I, I did watch the the Jimmy Dore interview with Cornell West. I mean, I, and and I, you know, I mean, full disclaimer, I have not watched the Jimmy Dore show much since I left. You know, I quit the show. It's it's been a couple of years now. It's gone and, downhill without Sharon. <laughs> it's nice of you to say, but but I, I don't watch it. Um, but I did watch that because so many people were talking about it, and I call I saw a couple segments. Um, and you know, and, and again, this is probably related to my, my personal experience. I mean, the whole thing just made me incredibly sad to, uh, to watch it. I mean, it, it was, it was hard for me to watch. It was, it was just honestly painful to watch. Um, I, I felt like the whole thing w was just sort of one kind of gotcha after another. And, and again, like the whole, to, to kind of liken the devious things the Democrats do to Cornell West and, and his discussion of white supremacy, I, I thought that was, you know, just just straight up wrong. Um, and, you know, it was I, I, I was talking to a friend and, and I said this, I'm like, you know, if I fell into a coma in 2019 or something like that and I woke up in 2023 and the first thing I saw in 2023 was that interview with Jimmy Dore in Cornell West. I would think I was still in a coma. Like, like I would think I'd be like, I'd be like, oh, God, I can't wait till I wake up from this fucking thing. I just had this nightmare that there was this interview between Jimmy Dore and Cornell West. Like, I, like I wouldn't have believed it. I, I would have believed like it was not real. And, um, you know, it's it's sad to me. It really is sad. I, I mean, I accept the reality of, of of where things are at. I mean, there's there's a reason the last stage of grief is acceptance. You know what I mean? And, and, and I've just kind of reached that point as far as, you know, the Jimmy Dore show. I, I quit that show for a large list of reasons. And one of them being the show was just going in a direction. I, I was not okay going in. I did not want to go in that direction. I don't even know where the show is at completely now. Cause again, I don't watch it. You know, like I that that interview was the first thing I watched right in a no, couple I, years. I mean, I I've watched, you know, I watched this thing with Graham. Um, right. and then there was one other clip that I watched that that somebody sent me that was it over the course of years so so i you know i i don't really have much to say about it other than you know it's just something in my past but yeah. um well but the, yeah the reason... i watched that interview and and it was uh yeah it was just really sad the reason why watch, I, I think it's important to discuss and obviously you know yeah you did the right thing you got out of there at the right time in my opinion and distanced yourself from that before it became totally you know destructive to your credibility well, and reputation. you know what man i'm not trying to i will say this because i don't say this publicly much but but i know there's some people it's like you know they, they think i'm i'm in on some big secret or i have some hidden motive and some hidden agenda and all i have to say is this I am probably, I mean, I can't verify this for sure, but I am probably the only comedian in the world, in the freaking world, who quit a salaried gig during a pandemic. All right. So look, I quit a regular paycheck during a pandemic knowing full well I wasn't going to be able to get anything because there was not much production going on. Then there was not much writing going on then, you know, knowing full well, like, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do next to keep my bills paid. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Ryan. So, you know, it's like, I, you, may yeah, not, you... you know, people, not everyone's going to like you no matter who you are. And, and if you don't like me, that's totally fine. But one thing you can't say about me is that I, I don't stick up for what I believe in. Cause you know, the proofs of the freaking pudding. A hundred, no, a hundred percent, Ron. I, I genuinely think you're one of the most honest and good faith people in this space, and you deserve all the credit in the world for making that decision. I've always held you in such high respect for making it. Um, but well, and the only reason you, I even you. the only reason I even talk about this, by the way, and bring up Jimmy Dore is not because of the fact that you used to work for him and write for him or whatever. It's because of the fact that due to the fact that he's been one of the most aggressively pro third party channels for the last six years, he 
what he has to say in this space now about Cornell West is having massive implications. It's having massive implications. So it's not even about the fact that you used to work for him. I'm, I, I, I believe that you're the most fucking reputable, honest guy on this goddamn platform. You don't have to prove that to me. And I really don't think you have to prove that to anyone in our audience. They all love you. Every time you come on the show, they rejoice. Uh, oh, well, what, well, thanks, reason why, Guardians. Of course. The reason why I think it's important to discuss, like I said, is because there's not a lot of pro third party independent media as it is. Right. Jimmy Dore created that lane for himself and has occupied it. Uh, or at least pretended to occupy it basically ever since Bernie Sanders dropped out in 2016 and he decided to support Jill Stein, which, by the way, I did, too. I've also been a third party voter right. since Jill yeah, Stein. Too. But because of that fact, he's now arguably most, most likely the largest pr pro third party channel on YouTube, or at least he okay. was up until about a month ago when he decided to turn on Cornell West and start nitpicking him and tearing him down, acting like he's uh, extension of the establishment, a stooge of the DNC. And, you know, he's out here doing propaganda for Biden because he refuses to say that Biden is worse than Trump, um, which is completely consistent with his uh, analysis that, last time around. Well, and it's creating this ripple effect where everyone from, you know, the revolutionary black, not everyone, but a lot of his sycophants and followers, of which there are many, including lots of other supposedly third party channels, are now going to war with Cornell West. They're calling him an op. They're calling him an infiltrator. They're saying he's a Biden propagandist. And it's literally having a real negative effect on his campaign, on his ability to raise you know, money, on his ability to get the word out. They're smearing him. And it's just it's just hard to watch, like I said, because these are the people that have been so aggressively pro third party that have been dragging everyone else for not being as pro third party as they are. Now they're the ones playing the role of the sheepdog. They're tearing down Cornell West and talking about how Trump is the lesser evil. They are making the lesser evil argument for Trump while they tear mm. down Dr. West. So at this point, they're that enemies of our movement. If we care about third parties, if we care about this campaign and want Cornell West to be successful, then they're worse than the Biden bros. They're worse than the, you know, blue MAGA. They are just fucking MAGA. And all they do is tear down Dr. West. All they've done for the last month since that interview that you referenced is criticize him, call him an op, call him a fucking propagandist for Joe Biden, which is call, so Calling disgusting. Cornell West an op? Yes, yes. You better have some receipts if you're going to make that claim.